Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me today on R. Kelly Appeal TV. So we do have an update um, regarding the motion filed by Jennifer Bonjean, and uh, it's a write-up in the legal section where it says, Feds blast R. Kelly's bid to delay sentencing. His victims have waited years. And the commenter is Bill Donahue. Um, and this was, um, this article was a write-up on April 4th, 2022. Scott Olson, federal prosecutors on Monday sharply objected to R. Kelly's recent request to delay sentencing for his sex trafficking and racketeering convictions, arguing that the singer's victims have already waited years to see justice. Kelly's new lawyer, Jennifer Ann Bonjean, argued last week that the singer's May 4th sentencing in Brooklyn federal court should be pushed back until after he stands trial in August on separate charges in Illinois. She says statements made during the sentencing might be used against him in the later trial. But in a response on Monday, prosecutors said they strenuously oppose that request and urged the judge to stick to the original sentencing date. His victims have waited years to see the defendant held to account and sentenced for his crimes, prosecutors wrote Monday. Moreover, many victims have cleared their schedules to travel from other states to New York to attend and be heard at the May 4, 2022 sentencing hearing. After decades of accusations of sexual misconduct, Kelly was convicted in September of 2021 in New York federal court on nine counts related to accusations that the singer had orchestrated a long running scheme to recruit and abuse women and underage girls, setting the stage for a potential lifetime prison sentence. The upcoming second trial, currently scheduled to start August 1st in Chicago federal court, focuses on separate charges that Kelly obtained child pornography and obstructed justice. In a motion last week, Bonjean urged U.S. District John and Judge Ann M. Donnelly to delay the sentencing until after the August trial. She said Kelly might be able to mitigate his upcoming prison sentence by offering certain testimony, but that she has concerned but that she was concerned that such statements might be used against him in the Chicago trial. Mr. Kelly is facing a serious and lengthy sentence of imprisonment, Bonjean wrote. He should not have to forego presenting mitigating evidence at his sentencing hearing out of fear that his words could be used against him at his upcoming trial. In Monday's response, prosecutors said that argument strains Credulity. They said the singer was highly unlikely to admit any guilt since he's currently seeking to overturn the verdict and has essentially changed every aspect of his conviction. To the extent the defendant intends to appropriately highlight his own background and characteristics that the court should consider as sentencing as mitigation, he can do so and surely intends to do so without admitting his guilt given his likely appeal, they wrote. Prosecutors also offered to put up a firewall between the teams from the Illinois and New York U.S. attorney's offices. They said Bonjean's speculative concern about sentencing would be entirely ameliorated through such a procedure. In a statement to Billboard, Bonjean said the government's proposed solution was entirely inadequate and that a three-month delay would not cause problems for anyone involved in the case. The government continues to view Mr. Kelly's trial and now sentencing proceedings as nothing more than a platform for his accusers, Bonjean said. I'm saddened that the government is more concerned with meeting out mob justice than to ensuring that Mr. Kelly gets a fair sentencing hearing. So I looked at the motion filed and I'm going to read it to you. Um, let me get it here. Case 119-CR00286, document 281, filed 4422, page 1 of 3, page identification number 11138, U.S. Department of Justice, United States Attorney, Eastern District of New York, 
Federal number 2019R00029, April 4th, 2022 by ECF, Honorable Ann M. Donnelly, United States District Judge, U.S. District Court, Eastern District of New York, 225 Cabman Plaza East, Brooklyn, New York, 11201, regarding United States versus Robert Sylvester Kelly, criminal docket number 19-286, parentheses, S-3, parentheses, parentheses, AMD, parentheses. Dear Judge Donnelly, the government respectfully submits this letter to strenuously oppose the defendant's March 29th, 2022 motion to adjourn the sentencing in the above captioned matter. See ECF number 279, parentheses, DEF motion, parentheses. The defendant, Robert Kelly, is currently scheduled to be sentenced on May 4th, 2022 at 10 a.m. The court set the sentencing date on September 27th, 2021, the date the jury found the defendant guilty on all counts. The defendant's current counsel, Ms. Jennifer Bonjean, entered her notice of appearance approximately one month later on October 29th, 2021, see ECF number 253. In her motion, defense counsel seeks an adjournment of the sentencing until a date after the defendant's trial in the Northern District of Illinois, NDIL, which is currently scheduled to commence August 1st, 2022, primarily because she claims she cannot otherwise adequately protect Mr. Kelly's constitutional rights at sentencing in this case without compromising his Fifth Amendment rights in the NDIL case. Defendant's motion at one. Even assuming arguendo that it is so, there are other ways to effectively address defense counsel's state, stated concern that she cannot advise Mr. Kelly to be examined or interviewed by a mitigating expert for sentencing in this case if his words might be used against him in some manner in his pending NDIL trial. Idea two. As an initial matter, given that the defendant has essentially challenged every aspect of his conviction as set forth in his post-trial motions and likely also intends to appeal his conviction, should his post-trial motions prove unsuccessful, it's strange credulity that the defendant would say anything to a potential mitigation expert that would incriminate him in the NDIL matter. Footnote 1. Footnote one. Indeed, the same alleged concern would apply in the event the defendant were to be granted a new trial after appeal. Given that the same pretorted concern would exist even after the NDIL trial, the, exist the existence of the NDIL trial cannot serve as a valid basis to delay the defendant's sentencing. To the extent the defendant intends to appropriately highlight his own background and characteristics as Section 3553A factors the court should consider as sentencing as mitigation, he can do so and surely intends to do so without admitting his guilt given his likely appeal. In addition, the speculative concern can be extremely ameliorated by adopting the following procedure. To the extent the defendant engages a mitigating expert, the court can permit defense counsel to file the mitigation report or relevant portions of it under seal. The undersigned assistant U.S. attorney who constitutes a separate prosecution team from those Prosecuting the NDIL case will not share any such mitigating report with anyone involved in the NDIL prosecution and to the extent that there are any concern in this regard would welcome a court order further prohibiting any such disclosure. Such a procedure would entirely eliminate any risk that the defendant's words might be used against him in some manner in his pending NDIL trial and thus obviate the defendant's purported need for sentencing adjournment. Nor is it accurate to suggest that there is no prejudice from adjourning the defendant's sentence, defendant motion at two. 
Under the Crime Victims' Rights Act, the defendant's victims have both the right to be reasonably heard at any public proceeding in the district court of in, in the district court involving sentencing and the right to proceedings free from unreasonable delay. 18 USC Supreme Court 3771A4 and A7. As proven at trial, the defendant engaged in wide-ranging and extensive criminal conduct involving multiple victims with impunity for decades. This victims, ha his victims have waved, waited years to see the defendant held to account and sentenced for his crimes. Moreover, in reliance on the date set by the court in September 2021, many victims have cleared their schedules to travel from other states to New York to attend and be heard at the May 4, 2020 sentencing hearing. Delaying the defendant's sentencing until after NDIL trial, which will presumably last several weeks, is not reasonable in the circumstances, particularly where as here, the above described procedure will alleviate defense counsel's purported constitutional concern. In addition, as the court is aware, the defendant is currently housed in Brooklyn, New York, while awaiting sentence. The U.S. Marshals will need to arrange for his in custody transfer to NDIL prior to his trial there. Delaying his sentence until after his NDIL trial is inefficient and will result in needless expense and delay by requiring his transfer back to this district for the sentencing after the NDIL trial and then back again to NDIL for sentencing there. Finally, defense counsel's other professional obligations are not a basis to adjourn the sentencing hearing, which has been on the calendar since September 27, 2021. Defense counsel was aware of the sentencing date when she entered a notice of appearance. In this case, and when she later decided to become the count defendant's counsel in the NDIL case. Footnote 2. Like all lawyers who appear before this court, defense counsel handles more than one matter at a time, which is the norm for experienced litigators. As an experienced attorney, defense counsel is undoubtedly capable of meeting her professional obligation in this manner and her other cases. Respectfully submitted Breon Peace, United States Attorney by Elizabeth E. Gidas, Nadia Shahada, Maria Cruz Melendez, Assistant U.S. Attorneys, 718-254-7000, CC to the clerk of court by ECF, defense counsel by ECF. So um, footnote two, Ms. Bonjean entered a notice of appearance in the NDIL case on February 18, 2022. Two things that I want to bring up under what we just read. Number one, the Ukrainian war. There is a reason and a connection to this as well for this to be happening right now. It really and truly doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense why it's happening right now after all the many, many years of alleged um, victims. Now, all of a sudden, everything is going as it should. It's just going straight forward through the calibration system. And R. Kelly is, Robert Sylvester Kelly is a very political arena right now. And the second thing I want to talk about is the, um, the justice, Katanji Brown. This is happening in the world today as well. So let's look at Clarence Thomas. Now, Clarence Thomas was born June 23rd, 1948, and he is an American lawyer who serves as an associate justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. He was nominated by President George H.W. Bush to succeed Thurgood Marshall and has served since 1991. Isn't this the same time that R. Kelly was coming up? Thomas is the second African-American to serve on the court after Marshall since 2018. Thomas has been the senior associate justice, the longest serving member of the court with the tenure of 30 years, 163 days as of April 4th, 2022. Amazing. Pay attention to the dates. Now, 
I don't know how this all ties in, but I'm just paying attention to what is taking place. Now, our great, wonderful sister, Miss Katanji Brown is, um, let me see here. I'm trying to find her. Um, let me see here. Let's go. Okay, let's look at this. Katanji Brown Jackson, former vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission, is an American attorney and jurist who has served as a federal judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit since 2021. She is a current nominee for the Supreme Court awaiting Senate confirmation. She was born de September 14, 1970. She's 51 years old in Washington, D.C. The age range is very prominent here. Um, she's American and her previous office was vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission. Um, and her education is Harvard University, Harvard Law School. So our sister is really coming up at this time. And I believe that these are the people that R. Kelly is going to meet at the top. Because if I was him, I would continue to take it through the uh, all the way up to the Supreme Court. So I'm bringing this together for some apparent reason. I'm not really too sure, but I need to get your comments, your your voices of opinion, especially those who are in the criminal justice field, because this is something bigger that is going on with Robert Sylvester Kelly. And I believe that um, it it's done for the purpose of bringing this all together. Now, the victims, they need to be happy too, supposedly. Even those that we don't believe and even those that we feel straight lied. And you know, I'm down for that, right? I'm down for that because I did commentaries on it. But here's what I want you to understand. The victims must be happy to see him spend some form of time incarcerated so that this won't become a regular process in the system of society. You know, we're already dealing with the whole, you know, uh, child pornography, um, um, violence against women, domestic violence. So I believe that the United States is trying to calm this down. And so the victims are going to be happy because they're going to see him serving some time. However, on the flip side of it, it's all going to come out in the wash when his appeal goes to the Supreme Court. So we just got to give it time and he has to not give up because this is the journey in which he must go to prove his innocence, to prove what we've been talking about all this time regarding our brother, Robert Sylvester Kelly. So what are your thoughts? What are your concerns? What are your feelings? Do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Tell me what you feel so that we can really nip this in the butt. Do you think I'm onto something? Um, I truly thank you for being here. I thank you for listening, commenting, coming through and just giving sh your shares, your likes, your hashtags, you know, and if it wasn't for Daddy Lolo and celebrating R. Kelly on Facebook, this would not, our, our information here at R. Kelly TV would probably be less, it would be stifled. And so we're going to be doing an interview with him and his celebrity page um, very shortly. And he is a wonderful man from Illinois that have been fighting for the case since the very beginning. He was out there when um, with his bullhorn and he was doing his thing, you know, supporting Robert Sylvester Kelly. So we will be having an interview with him very soon. And so again, Let's keep Robert Sylvester Kelly alive in our mind and in our hearts and just know that justice will prevail. All this will work out because only the good works out in the end. God bless you. And as always, keep it 100, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.